Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may go ahead and be seated. You know, in this life, it was not meant to be lived alone. Amen. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, that means there's there's no room. There's absolutely no room for loneliness in this life. When God has given us his life, amen, his life by his spirit that is in us. And he promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. So if we ever feel like he's not around or if we ever feel like he has left us, then we are going by just mere fleshly human feelings. Amen. We've got to know uh, there's a difference between our fleshly feelings and a spirit feeling and sensing. Amen. And we've got to know the difference of all the people of God. Let the spirit filled people of God know how to walk in the spirit. Amen. And um, if we've been filled with the Holy Spirit, we must learn to walk in the Spirit. Amen. And so uh, <clears throat> that was the whole that was the whole goal of God when Adam and Eve fell, and um, they birthed sin into the human race. Amen. That's what they did. They gave birth to sin in the human race. So God had a plan. And that was to um, that that man, that human man, would die and that he would be born again of an incorruptible seed. So every human being is born from Adam. Amen. Born into the sin, into the sin of Adam. Amen. And so... Um, born selfish and full of sin and you could meet the kindest nicest person but they still have the the heart of sin amen unless we receive jesus christ as our lord and savior and be born again born of an incorruptible seed um there is no hope amen but thank god we have hope say i have hope and my hope tells me that everything's going to be okay. No matter how it looks today, it is going to be okay. Hallelujah. And that's what the God kind of hope says. Now, the, the world kind of hope says, well, it's not really hope, it's wish. <laughs> I wish that everything will turn out okay. But we don't wish. We know what God is able to do. Amen. You know, in thinking about the whole thing about the Holy Ghost, that is that is the blessed assurance of God in us. The Spirit of God in us is His bless, blessed assurance living in us, not to only give us hope for a future, but also put the seed of faith in us that that seed of faith can grow and develop by the entrance of God's word. Amen. Because the entrance of God's word brings light. It brings a revelation. It brings an understanding. Amen. And if we don't have a revelation or understanding of God's word, then it's hard to live by faith. Faith comes, it says, by hearing and hearing. So, Faith is something you don't only hear with the outer ear. It's something you hear. You hear it with the outer ear, but you hear it with the inner ear. You hear and hear. <laughs> you hear in here. <laughs> I hear here and I hear in here. I'm hearing and I'm hearing. Amen. And so when you hear and hear, then faith comes. And so you develop your faith. You feed your faith and develop and strengthen your faith by acting on those things. Amen. You just, you don't, you feed on the word, but then you have to act on the word. It's like you could have the, the best diet and have, do all your boneless, skinless chicken breast till it comes out of your ears or eat your tofu and your spinach and eat all, you know, going all organic and doing all this other stuff and it'll not build a muscle on your body. Amen. It'll feed you. 
and give you all the nutrients and the ability. But if you just lay with your arms by your side and somebody intravenously feeds you, you will lay there and not develop any muscle. Why? Because you take in the nutrition so you can work your muscles and work your body. Amen. And so um, uh, you ask anybody that goes to the gym, it's, it's diet and exercise. It's diet and exercise. A life of faith is, a, is diet and exercise. It's hearing the word and acting like it's true. Amen. Acting like that if you pray, God will answer your prayers. And never question. But if, if, if something's not happening, then you, you go back to the word. You go back to the diet and find out where you're, what are you missing. Are you lacking in iron? Are you lacking in um, D comp B complex? Are you lacking in C? Find out where you're lacking, amen, in order to build yourself up in your most holy faith. And um, so thank God for his word that helps us. It's never to condemn us but it's always to help us so that we can see what's missing, what ingredient is missing to make things um, a life of faith. Amen. And so we know that we have hope and that we have faith, but also the love of God has been sown in us. Amen. Placed in us because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of love. Amen. Spirit of love. And so when the Holy Spirit comes, he brings love faith and hope. Amen. And so we have to build on these things. We have to act on these things. Even though the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, we still have to act on it. <laughs> you can't just act any way you want and say, well, the love of God's in there. If you don't like it, if you don't see it, then <laughs> we have to understand that the love of God is in there. And we have to work, exercise the love of God. Amen. So these are things that the Holy Spirit was given to us for a reason, a reason he was given to us. Amen. Let's look at Galatians in chapter five. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to start in verse 13. I'm just going to be reading out of the NIV. Disney did not buy the NIV in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> There's something going around that Disney bought the rights to the NIV. They did it. All right, we're going to do Galatians 5.13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. <laughs> That's a reason to jump and shout and scream. <laughs> and we don't if we don't understand that. If we don't really understand what that freedom is, then we're not going to get excited about that freedom. But Jesus came that we would be free and whom Christ has set free is ab absolutely free indeed. Amen. So it says, but you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Amen. We're free and we have flesh and we're going to have flesh until we die. And our flesh is not renewed. Our flesh is of the earth. This flesh ain't leaving this earth. <laughs> Rather, serve one another humbly in love. I love that humble. Amen. Humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or your, you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want aren't you glad that god explained that a little bit because we have flesh now now we remember what we said we go to the word because that's our diet to help us to live a better life so these things I'm saying are all things to help us have a better life. And knowing that as long as we have flesh, our flesh is not us. It's just the, 
the suit we live in. Amen. And it helps us to recognize one another. <laughs> but it's not us. We are spirit beings and we live in flesh. And when this flesh dies, our spirit man will come out. <laughs> We're coming out. <laughs> and when we come out, um, we are going to be, <laughs> we are going to have an awakening. <laughs> Because we are going to see things that we ain't never seen before, that we've only heard about, we tried to imagine. Amen. So we have to be, we have to have a sensing of the fact that we are a three part being. Amen. Spirit, that's who we are. Soul, our mind, our will, and emotions goes with us, and our flesh. Amen. The flesh part is the part of this world part. It belongs to this world part. Amen. And even though it keeps us being able to live in this world part, we're not a part of this world. <laughs> Amen. So it says they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. <laughs> I said I get confused here. Even though we started out by saying how free we are, whom Christ has set free is free indeed, amen? But it also says that we are not to do whatever we want. But all day long, we basically do whatever we want. <laughs> I'm sure there's times we may take out time sensing we should be praying or, um, you know, praying for somebody or, you know, you... You don't want to walk in love in a moment, and you decide, I'm going to walk in love instead. <laughs> Amen? The word is clear that we are in conflict with each other. Our flesh and our spirits are going to be in conflict. So, so that we understand that we don't do whatever we want. But if you are led by the Spirit... You're not under the law. So if we go by, you know, all of our flesh has different desires. You know, each person in here has different things that they desire and they like. And not all of them, you know, not all of them are, are bad or good or indifferent. Everybody just has different fleshly desires. And um, what one person might be interested in, another person. So, so, you know, somebody might be into something that, you know, like I have an interest in gardening. It's not my life. <laughs> but I do learn a lot from it, spiritual principles from it. And so, but, you know, I could stop at any time because <laughs> it's work. <laughs> it's like I just need a hose on my patio. I'm tired of getting water. <laughs> it's just work. Everything in this life is work. But when somebody... Love something so much, that work just becomes a pleasure. Amen? So we have to have an understanding. If we're not being led by the Spirit in a certain area, we have to stop and figure out what are we being led by. Is this something, is this a soulish or fleshly desire? Amen? So it says, but if you are led by the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. <laughs> There's a lot of things under that like. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm not going to keep on, etc., etc., etc. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions, desires. Since we live by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, let us keep in step with the Holy Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So, you might think, well, I'm not envious. I'm not jealous of anybody. You would be surprised. 
at the little things that provoke us, get provoked. But, but God is very clear in his word that we have been set free, but we're not supposed to use that freedom for sin. Amen. And then in chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh. Amen. If th These are things we have to, if we want the God kind of life, the best kind of life, we have to stop and examine ourselves to find out where we're at in this. Because it says, whoever sows to please their flesh. We all have a tendency to do things to please our flesh, but we grow and get better at it because we first come to the Lord. We're not really aware of any of this. You know, I mean, if we all look back, maybe when we started with the Lord and, and think about things that we did when we were first saved, thinking it was okay, and then you realize maybe a year, two, three years later, that's not really God. <laughs> Amen? But it says, the man who, uh, a man reaps what he sows, whoever sows, whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. It started out by saying, God cannot be mocked. Don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And whoever sows to the please the spirit, from the spirit it will reap eternal life. And let us not become weary in doing good for that at the, at the proper time. At the proper time. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Why? Because there's always going to be a temptation. Every single human being is going to be confronted with the temptation to quit, to give up to get disgruntled, to get, to get sad, to get mad, to go bad. There's so many things in the flesh that wants to go south. <laughs> Amen. So we have to be aware of that, that the flesh will work on our souls, and our souls will just want to quit and want to give up and throw in the towel and say, it's not worth it, and why God doesn't answer my prayer, and, you know, I'm not getting anything from church. I don't get anything from the Bible. I don't, God doesn't answer my prayers. The devil will hammer you. <laughs> Amen. He, that, that's what he does. He hammers humanity, and especially the children of God, to try to get us to quit and give up. That was the whole story about Job. That was the whole story. Satan wanted to just hammer Job until he threw in the towel on the things of God. And each and every one of us are no better. The enemy wants to come to us and get us to throw in the towel, <laughs> to quit, to give up on the things of God. But at that time, that's when we have to stir ourselves up the most. I can't tell you how many times I've seen over the decades of people that would go through go through tests or trials or just get in their head about things and start looking at it like the absolute worst and you're like it, I don't know why they're looking at it like this is the end of the world this is nothing <laughs> I've been through 10 times worse and made it through they've been through 10 times worse and made it through but but that's what the enemy does he tries to get us to to thinking you know the this is the worst, and I'm never going to make it through this test or through this trial, and I might as well just give up, and God doesn't really care, and all of these negative thoughts, and, you know, church is the worst, people aren't real, you know, they're just a bunch of fakes. This is, this is all the enemy talks to get us to quit and give up on what God's already accomplished in our lives and to draw back from God and to just quit. So we understand that's what the falling away is. That would, that's what a great falling away is. They just quit and they give up and they walk away. We don't want to be those people. Amen. And we want to be there to help people that are shrinking back. And Tom, you can do this. Amen. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. And so understanding that it says, let, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We're not going to give up. We're not going to quit. 
Because if Jesus said it is finished, then it's finished and we're just going to go through these things and knowing and uh, we're going to have to speak up. Amen. Jesus said if you speak to the mountain, he didn't say if you look at that mountain day in and day out. <laughs> he didn't say if you have a mountain, it'll disappear. Everybody's going to have mountains, right? Mountains and molehills. Most people are making mountains out of molehills. But he said, if you speak to that mountain, let me just tell you, I've spoke to mountains and I didn't see anything happen right away. So what do I do? There's times I handle it different. I just think, I don't care. I don't care how it looks. That mountain's got to move in Jesus' name. And then I just move on, even though that mountain's still sitting there, it's got to go. And there's some times where I'm like, you fall mountain in Jesus' name, you got to leave. <laughs> and then I'll say it again. Mountain, you got to be removed in Jesus' name. The next day, you fall mountain, I spoke to you, and I'm telling you again, you got to go in Jesus' name. The next day, in Jesus' name, you fall mountain. <laughs> Two weeks later, you fall mountain in Jesus' name, you have to leave. I don't care, I'm not quitting. I'm, this is a test of who's going to quit, and I'm not going to be the quitter here. Until one day you wake up and you're like, what happened to the mountain? <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I'm speaking in faith and tell the mountain to go. I got so used to it that now I'm expecting it to be there and it's gone. <laughs> Amen? Because we live by faith. Faith in what? In the name of Jesus. Amen? In the name of Jesus. And, and we, in walking by faith, our faith is being developed, right? Because walking is just the exercise. Amen. You might, you might think, okay, I'm going to do 100 sit-ups right now. Haven't done a sit-up in 20 years. I'm going to do 100 today. That's it. I'm going. I used to do 100 a day, so I'm just going to do 100 a day. And at five, you're like, I'm dying. <laughs> Amen. You might exercise your faith five years ago, and man, it was happening. And then you just got flabby with your faith <laughs> well you're gonna have to start with five <laughs> you're not just gonna say okay i'm gonna try 100 setups right here all right i'm gonna try five and then tomorrow i'm gonna do six and then next week i'm gonna start doing 10 and then next month i'm gonna start doing 15 <laughs> and then next year i'll start doing 20 <laughs> it's it's something that we have to persist at amen amen Staying with it. Let's look at Romans in chapter 8. Hallelujah. I'm not going to read this whole chapter because you can read this at home. And um, hallelujah, just knowing you could read it at any time. You can even press on your phone, if you got U version, you could have it audio and you don't even have to use your eyeballs. You can just listen to it. Amen. But Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to start at um, verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. That was uh, 2,000 years ago and up to this time. Amen. God's word is timeless. Amen. Up to the present time, not only so, but we ourselves who have first the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption of the son, adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Amen. Let's just say something here. We have flesh, and when it dies, it'll be buried or whatever, whoever. If a shark eats it, <laughs> whatever happens, happens to our flesh because our, it's irrelevant. Our spirits come out. Our spirits are alive unto God, right? And so whatever happens at, at a particular time, which is after the millennium, the, the thousand years that, that Jesus is going to rule and reign here, after that period, all those that have died in Christ, you know, uh, from the beginning of time, because, you know, 
they were offered the gospel after Jesus died. He went to hell in the grave to offer the gospel to people. Some of them came back to life. And could you imagine that? People were raised from the dead. <laughs> they didn't have resurrected bodies. Their human bodies just came back to life. So anyway, but after, when we get to the, after that thousand years, everybody's going to get their glorified bodies, their resurrected bodies, like the kind that Jesus has, right? After that time. So it says, we ourselves who have the first roots of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption of the Son, the redemption of our bodies. At that time, we're going to have our, we're waiting for that time. Amen? That we're not just spirit beings, but we're spirits with glorified bodies. The whole creation itself is waiting for that time. Amen? For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Because it's going to happen. Doesn't matter how long it takes, it's going to happen. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, and we do not know what we ought to pray. For but, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's holy people, God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works, together, works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to all these? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with his gracious, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who con condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long and consider the sheep as um, to be slaughtered. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels or demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither height nor debt, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that the love of God that is in is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So we have to keep our focus as the children of God, what the purpose is in our lives. Not just the call, but the daily purpose of our lives. And that is, if we haven't, there's other things that we could read in other scriptures. It's, it's about walking in the spirit. And it's not being weird. It's not being spooky. It's not being flaky. It's walking according to the spirit and the word, right? Because we, it, we have to hear the word and hear the word. But we know it says in James that those that just keep hearing the word and don't act on it, amen, it comes to nothing. Because it's those that do the word that are blessed. And we, you know, sometimes, you know, you see Christians, you know, have all different types of struggles. And we can't pretend to know what anybody goes through. But we do know this, that every single human being absolutely has a choice. Every single human being has a free will. God has given a free will. Amen? So that's why we pray for humanity. We pray for uh, sinners. We pray for those that have lost their way with God. We have to use our lives if we are going to be led by the Spirit, find ourselves in the Spirit. <laughs> and how we do that is in, in prayer in praise, and worship. 
Amen. We've got to learn how to walk in the spirit and not be dictated by our flesh. Of course, there's things that we have to do in the flesh. We eat, we um, clean, we spend time with loved ones. You know, we go to church. There's things that we just do, you know, naturally. But then there are things that are in there that are spiritual things, amen, that are walking in the spirit. Coming to church is a just the whole fact that you, somebody would desire to know where to go to church. Not A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people think that, that God has let them decide where they want to go. And those are the same kind of people that they think it's up to them to decide who to marry or decide where to work. Their lives are just their choices. But if we've given all those things to God, then we want to find out where does God want us to go to church? Who does God want us to marry? Where does God want us to work? What does God want us to do? Amen? And so in the whole aspect of finding out where God wants you to be at a church, then when you get there, you just know by the Spirit, this is where I'm supposed to be. I remember when we left our church in Chicago to go to, to move down to Oklahoma and um, to go to Ramah. And they, that, that is not just the, that, let me just say, Tulsa, Oklahoma is not the Bible Belt. It's the buckle of the Bible Belt. All the ministries that came out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, besides Kenneth Hagen Ministries and T.L. Osborne and Oral Roberts and um, uh, uh, so many, Bob Yandian, <laughs> and, and, and a lot of other ministers that live in different parts came out of Tulsa because they followed Brother Hagen. <laughs> Amen. A lot of times people are like, well, we follow this person, we follow that person. And I'm like, well, that's all right, but they learned everything. They learned from Brother Hagen, so why would I go to them, <laughs> learn from them secondhand? I could just learn, I could learn from Brother Hagen. <laughs> Amen. And so understanding that in Tulsa, there the the churches, I'm I'm saying still today, they've got every, I don't even know. How you can have so many huge churches in one small city. <laughs> but I, not just, I'm not just talking Rhema churches because a lot of people that have graduated Rhema, a lot of people that were on staff at Rhema went down the street and started a church <laughs> right down the street from, Tul from Rhema. There are a lot of Rhema churches in the Tulsa area. And then there's a lot of other kind of churches. And not one of them, I don't see any small, no, they don't have storefront churches there. They got cathedrals. <laughs> they got giant churches. And so when, when we knew that we were going there to go to, to go to school, we just thought, oh, you know, you know, we knew where we were at church in, in, uh, in Chicago. We knew that was our church, and that's where we were supposed to go. And we were in that church until God called us to go to Tulsa. So we thought, Oh my gosh, there's all these ministries down here. You know, when we're, let's let's check out we thought well, let's check out a couple of the big ones, you know. <laughs> let's go to some of the people we know of, you know, we'll check out the churches and so we went down there before we moved cuz they had to get acquainted with Rama weekend for the school and um, they had different meetings and you tours of the campus and we were in this one meeting and different instructors had got up and spoke here and there and then then Pastor Hagen got up to speak, and as soon as he started talking, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Am I talking like this? <laughs> I didn't hear him talking like this. All I heard is, that's my pastor. I just knew he was my pastor. And I'm thinking, at, at the time, I'm thinking to myself, Guy and I already talked about checking out other churches, but I don't think we need to be checking out any churches. This is the church. <laughs> and so Guy and I talked later, and he's like, that's my pastor. I go, that's my pastor. I go, I guess we're not shopping for churches. <laughs> we were young. <laughs> but a lot of times people don't have any inclination or understanding 
about praying about where to go to church. And um, so a lot of people know that, you know, it's called church hopping, you know, or church shopping. <laughs> They're waiting to find the church that has everything that they want. <laughs> I ain't going to find it. <laughs> Amen. Brother Hagen used to say that all the time. If you're looking for the perfect church, the moment you walk in the door, you just ruined it. Because <laughs> there's no perfect church. Right? Because we're all human and we're all learners. Amen. But actually, when you find that church, that is being led by the Spirit to find out where you're supposed to be at church. Amen. And you don't question it. You just know that you just know because you're led, led by the Spirit. And when you get there, you embrace it with all your heart and soul. This is where God has planted me, and this is where I'm going to grow. Amen. And so that's a spirit, that's a being led by the Spirit thing. It's just like in a job. You know, you might, there might be a, a promotion coming up, and you think that would be a great promotion, and you're, you know, put in for the promotion, and something inside you is going, mm, 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 mm. you're thinking, yeah, but it's got this much money, I'm going to have, you know, this, and it's going to have that, and the whole time your spirit's going, mm, 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 mm. Why? I always wonder when those times happen. God, just speak up. I'm listening. Go ahead, talk to me. And there's the times the Lord's like, you're going to have to go by that. Learn. Because why? God wants us to learn of all things how to be led by the Spirit. How to be led by the Spirit in all things. Amen? How to be led by the Spirit even in, even in who you marry. And then when you go through times, you're going to have to learn how to talk to the person by the Spirit. What does the Spirit want you to say? Sometimes the Spirit will have you say something you don't want to say. And sometimes you're going to want to say something. The Spirit's like, shut up. <laughs> you got to learn how to be led by the Spirit in all things, in your private life, amen, in your work life, in your family life. But we've got to learn how to be led by the Spirit. And that takes patience with yourself. And it takes stopping and smelling the roses. It takes us to stop and have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying about our lives. So we can be strengthened. Amen. And we could prosper. And we can be in health, even as our soul prospers. I love that that says, may you be in health and may you prosper and be in health even as your soul is prospering. Why? Because if your soul doesn't prosper, all that stuff's going to come to nothing. We, we need to learn how to obtain by the Spirit and how to maintain by the Spirit. Because it doesn't matter who you are and how much you know and how thoroughly convinced you are, the devil is going to come and try to get you off the mark. He's going to try to bring in confusion. Amen. Anybody else been there besides me? <laughs> He's trying to bring in confusion. Did I, did, it, did I do this wrong? Or did I miss God on this? Just stop. It doesn't matter. Just stop and get back in the spirit. Amen. The most beautiful thing that God did for humanity is enable us to live and move and have our being in him. The most beautiful thing that God has ever done for mankind is that we don't have to live merely by the flesh. We don't have to live by everything that we see. We live according to the spirit. And sometimes you have to shut your eyes. Shut, shut your natural eyes. Shut the eyes of your soul and let the eyes of your spirit be open. These are things we have to practice. This, just by preaching this, you don't wake up tomorrow and have it all down. This is something we absolutely have to do. We absolutely have to practice. And just because we don't have it down tomorrow it doesn't mean we quit. This is something we're going to do. We have to learn to be led by the spirit. But the only way to do that is know how to get in the spirit. We need to know how to get in the spirit. You don't get in the spirit. And the word of God. That's why the word of God says so much about praying with thanksgiving. Because 
being in the spirit doesn't come by praying with griping. T trying to walk in the spirit and, and get over into the spiritual realm because we, we have to know that there's a spiritual realm right here. And though we can't see it with our natural eyes, according to the word, there are many, many angels in this place right now just wanting the will of God to be done. Wanting the word of God to be preached. Wanting us to be aware of the spirit and the spiritual realm that we can walk in it. Because one of the most beautiful things that God has given mankind is the ability to walk in the spirit. And not be dictated by our flesh. Our flesh likes a whole lot of things. What was it said by St. Augustine said, a man has as many masters as he has vices. And the church of the living God in this hour, even at a word of faith, spirit-filled church, the church in this hour has many vices. The people in the church have many vices. And he said, a man has as many masters as he has vices. Amen. So we got to get rid of some of the masters that have mastered us right out of the will of God. We have to, before we, our flesh, yeah, let's, oh yeah, we're going to go here, we're going to do this. Let's, you know, instead we need to slow down and find out what does the Holy Spirit say about this. The church is just living by any any whim, <laughs> but what a priceless privilege we have to walk in fellowship with Jesus in the spirit. And we can so easily, because we are spirit beings and we live in a spiritual realm, simultaneously living in flesh in the natural realm, we've got to learn how to cross over and walk in the spirit in the supernatural realm. And the only person that can do that is ourselves. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. We have to learn how to walk in the spirit. And first and foremost, it's going to take a life of prayer. Praying with thanksgiving. Spending time in prayer. And we don't have to. I love this because just recently when I was up praying and I was just praying in tongues, I'm thinking to myself, you know, because sometimes I'll think about it and think, you know, just sitting here praying in tongues, I don't really feel like I'm doing anything really that spiritual. <laughs> and I was praying to the Spirit. The Lord started talking to me about it. He goes, who are you talking to when you pray to the Spirit? I'm like, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to you, God. He goes, what's coming out of your mouth? And I'm thinking, oh, well, it ain't me. It's my mouth, but what's coming out of it is God. And the Lord's like, you are prophesying and prophesying and prophesying and prophesying and prophesying. When you pray in tongues, you're not praying according to your information. You're not praying according to what you see. You don't pray according to how you feel, but you are speaking the perfect, the will, plan, and purpose of God. And all of a sudden, I had this, I, this thought. I could have been used by God to turn somebody's life totally around. I could have been used by God to stop somebody from getting killed in an accident. I could have used, God could have used my voice by his spirit to speak things in the spirit to stop natural disasters from happening. Because I don't have this little pea brain getting in the way, amen, of what God wants to say because we're, we mess things up. When we pray, we've got to learn this. When we pray in our known language, what we pray should be Scripture. We have to pray according to Scripture, not according, not according to what we want God to do and how we want God to do it. We need to pray scripture 
and then pray in the spirit. Amen. We can pray scripture. That's our understanding. We can know what we're praying. Not just willy-nilly throwing anything out there. <laughs> no, we're praying according to God's will in English, and we're praying in the spirit according to God's will. We've got to learn how to walk in the spirit, and we've got to cross over. And we cross over by praying in tongues, worshiping, worshiping God, praying with thanksgiving, praying with gratitude in our heart. God, it's, it's like there's something about whining and complaining that God's like, okay, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. We've, we've got to get these things down because there are things coming up in our future. Amen? Coming up in the near future that the church of the living God has to be ready and armed. And I see all these people that are getting saved now and on fire for God, and they're running with zeal. Amen? I don't want to be passed up by somebody that just got saved. All these young people getting saved and on fire for God and running for God and, and just wanting to pray and find out what the Spirit of God says. And then, you know, all the old Christians sitting there, oh, look at them. I don't be like that. I don't be running with them. You know, and then when they start getting off, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait one second here. This is what the Word of God says. <laughs> We're going to go with the Word. We're not going to go with your wild ideas here. <laughs> Amen. They need us. <laughs> and we need their fire. Amen. But we can have our own fire, but we're going to have to stir it up. Amen. The Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. God wants us to absolutely learn, if we haven't yet, learn how to walk in the Spirit and stir ourselves up and start walking in the Spirit. Don't put anything before the kingdom of God in this life because those things are going to pass away. You know, we have, to, we have to know by the word of God what's, what's going to happen. Jesus is coming back to rule and reign for a thousand years. Amen? And he's going to have thousands and thousands of people that are going to come back. Maybe I should read that. You know, these end times things can stir you up because even sinners are talking about the apocalypse. Even sinners are talking about end times, right? We should know about them. Hallelujah. In Revelations chapter 20, it says, I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key of the abyss and holding in his hand the great, a great chain. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. That's the thousand years that we're going to be on this planet. There's not a whole lot about what's going to happen in that thousand years in the Word of God. But listen. He threw him into the abyss and locked the seal it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore. You know, like right now how people are just deceived and they're pumping out lies and people believe it and that's deceived. If you believe a lie, you're deceived. So, to not um, deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended, and after that he must be set free for a short time. So, there's going to be a thousand years where Satan's going to be locked up. <laughs> Amen. Then it says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not, now a lot of people say, well, you know, people have been beheaded in the old times, you know, back in the day. That's not what this is talking about. Because it says, they had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. These are people that are going, these are Christians that will be here in the in the tribulation, okay? Could be you or I, depending on when this tribulation starts. Amen? They came to life. These that were beheaded lived in the tribulation. They were beheaded. 
They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. These are the ones, the ones that get beheaded during the tribulation, these thousands upon thousands of saints are going to come back to life in their glorified bodies. They're going to have bodies like Jesus. Amen? They're not going to just be spirits walking around. They're going to have glorified bodies. The rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were ended. That means everybody else that died before, all the way up to the end, everybody else, though they have, their spirits have gone into heaven, they don't have their glorified body, and that's what we're waiting for. This is, this is the first resurrection. Oh, it says, the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years ended, and this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. Amen? Now remember, this is those that at the, when Jesus returns, and all those that were beheaded during the tribulation are going to come back to life in their their flesh is going to be glorified and they're going to come back to life and rule and reign on this planet for a thousand years. And they are going to live for a thousand years because they don't have mortal flesh. Now, there's still going to be human beings that are going to live and die on the planet during that thousand years. Only those that were beheaded are going to have resurrected bodies during that thousand years, ruling and reigning with Christ. And let me just say, everybody born during that thousand years are going to know who the ones that were beheaded because they have resurrected bodies. And all they're going to know, because Satan is locked up, all they're going to know is Jesus is the ruler and reigns on this planet. And the ones that are in charge, the judges, and those that rule with Jesus are those that have resurrected bodies and they don't die. They're going to be born. This is all they're going to know. How different of a time is that thousand years going to be? Nothing like now. They're not going to have gay parades. <laughs> they're not going to know about any of that except for by the word that God detests those things. They're not going to be exposed to these things. They're still going to be educated and go to school, but there's not going to be any of that stuff going on in the schools. And they're going to be Bibles, and they're going to learn about God and about creation. They're going to learn all of these things in that thousand years. Why? Because Jesus is going to be ruling and reigning, and those that rule and reign with him are going to be those that were beheaded during the tribulation that refuse to take the mark of the beast. So if you are ever in line, <laughs> if they have lined you up and they want you to give a testimony and receive the mark of the beast, say, and you know once your head comes off, you're coming back in a few days <laughs> to rule and reign in a glorified body. And everybody else that has ever died in history is going to say, what about us? And he's going to say, you got to wait a thousand more years. <laughs> you have to wait for the next batch. That's the second resurrection, the first resurrection. How blessed are they? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ruling and reigning, that means you're going to tell, you're going to have this way of storing up water when it rains be subject to incompetent leadership. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. Those are those that were beheaded. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. So the worst thing that could happen is they can come after Christians. They can gather them up, say, come on, get on the bus. We're taking you to the camp. And you're like, woohoo! Hallelujah. What corner is it on? Because <laughs> I'll be there. And I ain't packing no bags. 
and you're going to have these buses full of Christians that are known they're going to give up their life and come back and rule and reign. Woohoo! <laughs> Amen. But but it's not going to be easy if you haven't learned how to walk in the spirit. <laughs> Because you'll be living according to the flesh and you'll give in to fear. And, you, and it says those that refuse to take the mark of the beast. Most people are going to take the mark of the beast out of fear. So the children of God have to absolutely know how to live by faith. Amen. We got to live by faith. And I don't care how old. I don't care what country. You got to live by faith and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come, even if I have to wait till the second resurrection. <laughs> even have to wait till after a thousand years, it's better than not going to heaven. Amen. God's people have got to, in this hour, learn how to walk by the Spirit, live by the Spirit. It's, it's not an option in the, in the body of Christ. A lot of Christians just think it's an option. Well, you know, curtain number one, curtain number two door number three it's not an option we absolutely have to learn how to walk by the spirit and find out what god wants us to do where does god want us to be what are we supposed to be doing learning to pray learning to cross over in the place of prayer knowing when you pray in the spirit you're praying the perfect will plan and purpose of god you are prophesying you are you are prophesying and you are saying the perfect will of god Amen. Over your community, over your family, over your house. Amen. If you just get in the habit of praying in tongues. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I hope it stirred you up. Um, God is looking for uh, some, a few good men and women that are ready to walk in the Spirit. Live by the Spirit, not by the flesh, because the flesh is going to get you in trouble every time. And everybody said, hallelujah, well, glory to God. If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, I just want to share with you for a moment the importance of receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You might believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and the King of glory, but you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So you can just say a little prayer right while you're there. I'm going to just pray with you. Say, Father God, thank you for Jesus. And thank you for the life that he has given me. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. If you believe that in your heart and you just said that, that makes you a born-again Christian. It doesn't mean you understand everything. Hallelujah. It's a lifetime of learning of the goodness of God. Be acquainted with the Bible and all that's in it. And when somebody teaches something, go to the Bible yourself and start searching through it to see if what they're saying is true. Find a good Bible church, amen? A Holy Ghost Bible church that teaches the Bible, amen? And you are welcome here if you're in the area. If not, just begin to communicate with God and ask God what you should do, amen? He will show you what church that you need to be a part of, where you will grow and flourish, also your family will. Amen.